Hello everybody, Gadget Boy here, and welcome to what is going to be the first of, uh, I don't know, three or four, I hope, videos on the construction of this neat little thing that I found on eBay called an M8 transistor tester, and I'll be providing a link to that in the description, which I think shows up somewhere about here on the video. Um, It'll be a, just a link to the eBay search that uh, contains the magic words that uh, pulls these items up. Now what this basically is, is, um, well, it's a multi-component tester, and you uh, plug the components uh, into this little ZIF socket. ZIF stands for Zero Inversion Insertion Force. I'll explain those later when I install it. Um, and you press a button, and... It thinks about it for a moment and it says, hey, this is what you plugged in and these are its uh, specifications. A very useful thing if you've got a transistor uh, that has <clears throat> the numbers rubbed off on it or you're trying to see if a capacitor is starting to fail or, or any number of things. And it's got a nice big display that shows you graphics and stuff. And we'll have a, a harder look at that once it's actually completed being constructed. Um, now. These are, are the instructions for the thing, um, and they suffer from a rather serious case of Chinglish. Um, so I figured I would do a quick video series on uh, the construction and initial setup of these uh, units, as well as um, do a little bit of a tutorial on soldering techniques along the way. Um, so we'll just uh, we'll get the soldering iron turned on there. I'll let it heat up and we'll get started. Now, uh, for this part of the video, I'm just going to do the stage where we're uh, soldering on the resistors. Um, there are quite a number of them. Um, and I, des I described these in, in my, uh, uh, my introduction to resistors video. Uh, these are the high precision. Um, five band resistors, uh, which can actually be a little fiddly sometimes to identify properly. So I uh, like to write the values down on those little tags when I'm doing a, a DIY kit, just to make them easier to distinguish. I've already started off by bending this one um, to put it in. All right, there's my soldering iron heated up. My soldering station is, is off screen here, but this is a soldering iron. It's a fairly basic one, and there's not a lot of magic to these. Uh, the tip gets hot, it melts solder. Uh, this is the solder here. I'll just tin the tip a little bit there because it's been a while since I've used the soldering iron. Um, there you go, now it's nice and shiny. Um, and you use a combination of the soldering iron and solder here. I use a lead bearing uh, solder because lead-free solders are kind of junk. And it's interesting, a lot of people will uh, complain, oh lead is poisonous and stuff, but it turns out that with the lead-free solders the flux that they have to use inside the solder in order to uh, make the solder flow properly is actually more toxic than any of the tiny bit of lead that you'll get in the fumes from the solder. So I prefer to do lead-free solder because uh, the, or I prefer to do lead-bearing solder because the lead-free solder uh, just doesn't flow properly. And I've actually run into a lot of problems with consumer electronics uh, as a result of lead -free, the lead-free solder regulations. Um, but Gadget Boy, you say, you've We've never heard anything in the media about lead-free solder causing problems. Of course you have. Anybody remember the Red Ring of Death with the Xbox, three, Xbox 360s? Well, that was caused by uh, cold solder joints in the graphics processor. Uh, not all of the Red Ring of Deaths, but the most common cause was cold solder joints in the graphics processor due to them using shit solder. Um, so that's just one example. I, I could give others, but uh, we'll move on with the uh, tutorial here. Um, now, soldering 
there's not a lot of magic to this. Uh, you simply take your uh, soldering iron and you place it on one side of the joint and you poke your solder into the other side of the joint and you flow it into the joint. So you've got a nice little bead there. Uh, lather, rinse, repeat on the other side. Always uh, pull the solder away first and then pull the iron away otherwise you'll end up with your solder stuck to the solder joint and well it's not exactly a big problem it can be a little embarrassing. So that's just the uh, very simple uh, process of soldering and then you just uh, nip off the, the extra beads there and there you have a completed solder joint. Now I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me do every single one of these. It would be mind-numbingly boring. So uh, we'll just fade to black here for a moment. I'll work on these uh, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like with all of the resistors uh, placed correctly on the board. Um, for note, uh, because I haven't mentioned this part, uh, the board is actually very specific. You can see here, uh, let's get that focused in, uh, where they've actually made the board rather nicely and you can see all of the values printed very clearly on the board, which makes that part very easy. So uh, I'll see you guys in probably about 10 minutes. Hello again, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I noticed as I was beginning to work on this, it's about halfway done now, uh, you'll notice, come on, focus, there we go, here where it says 2K2. That puzzled me for a moment uh, when I ran into it up here, and I decided just now to do another quick blurb on it. Uh, 2K2 in this case uh, means a uh, 2200 ohm or 2.2 K ohm resistor. Um, so that's uh, kind of an odd little bit of notation there, um, but it seems to hold to the format of the way they do it on this particular board. So I just thought I'd explain that quickly, and now we'll get back to soldering. All right, and we're back. <clears throat> I see I've uh, placed all of the resistors more or less neatly on the board here. Um, now, I'll show you something I like to do, uh, which is completely unnecessary. You'll notice that all of the resistors are set up with their color bands so that you can just read them across as you hold the device. Um, <clears throat> resistors are, of course, a non-polarized item, so you don't actually have to pay attention to polarity with them, but I like to do that uh, largely for aesthetics, but also for ease of identifying components um, on the board for troubleshooting. Um, so we're just going to move on really quickly. I'm going to uh, solder on some of the uh, uh, some of the other components um, onto this board real quick, um, and I'll keep up a little bit of commentary as I do so. So, all right. So we're going to start with this. This is just the uh, the socket for the brain of this tester, which is right there. Um, so we'll just uh, stick that into the board there. Now these guys can be a little, a little difficult to seat because they have so many pins. Um, so what I and a lot of other electronic hobbyists do is... Uh, I like to solder down one pin, um, make sure everything's seated so you can see it's actually at quite a bit of an angle there. Um, so we'll just reheat that solder joint, make sure 
it's flush. Come on, cooperate. There we go. Now it's flush. And now that first solder joint will hold it in place while I proceed to solder the other joints in. We'll start with an opposite corner there. We'll just quickly tack these in. Now you'll see that this uh, this solder is generating a lot of smoke. I don't want anybody panicking saying, good lord, that's a lot of uh, lead fumes he's inhaling there. Um, the smoke from the solder is actually mostly oh, got a little warm there. Uh, mostly just from the uh, the flux or or the rosin, um, which is fairly. What's going on here? There we go. Uh, pretty much, it's basically just pine sap. Um, I'm sure it's gotten a little more sophisticated uh, over time, um, but it's just a, a kind of a sticky. Uh, stuff that they put in the center of the um, in the center of the solder to help it flow onto the metal. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, the solder from lead free or the, the flux in lead free solder actually turned out to be I'm gonna put just a little bit more in these pads. Turned out to be uh, quite noxious and fairly toxic in and of itself, uh, which sort of <clears throat> negated any benefit from having lead-free solder. So uh, yeah, um, and it's actually, for me, it's actually quite a pleasant smell. I, I grew up with uh, the smell of solder because my dad was an electronics technician and had his own little projects that he did. Uh, and so it's a, it's a very nostalgic odor for me. Um, I rather quite like it. Uh, so that's just that's just a socket that we'll later plug this into. Uh, we're not going to do it now because uh, there are additional steps later. Um, now this is a neat little thing. Um, when I actually, I think I'm going to leave. Yeah, I'm going to leave these two until later. So I'll explain those in a later video when I get around to them. Um, so I think I'll leave this video for here. Um, thank you again for watching. If you liked it. Uh, Give the like button a click, uh, share it with your friends, um, subscribe if you want notifications as I do new videos, um, and thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.